on YouTube, it's your boy OG Team A, and today we got how Moray's career sunk deep in quicksand. I see what they tried to do with that. <laughs> Y'all thought y'all were funny. Um, by 11 11, you know, going, I already liked the video. So, um, without that being said, let's go ahead and see how Moray's career sunk because I ain't gonna lie, that song, hold up, my bad, yo. But that song, Quicksand, was fire. I ain't gonna lie. So I'm interested to see how this story will intake. About that being said, let's go ahead and get to the video. Bray's career is currently sinking deep in quicksand, and as each day passes, it is only getting worse. Just four years ago, following his breakout hit with over 200 million views on YouTube alone, North Carolina artist Moray was one of the most buzzed about upcoming names. It's like you smell the best food in your life, like, what's cooking that? This right here, bro. However, these past two years have been the complete opposite in terms of success for Murray. Along with having not dropped a project since 2021, it has now also been over an entire year since Murray even released a new song. With many fans left to wonder what happened to Murray, simply by looking at his recent tweets, it seems to be a tale of an upcoming artist falling victim to the cutthroat music industry. But as we're about to see, the truth behind Murray's disappearance is much deeper than meets the eye. Four years ago, Murray thanked Marshmello's manager, Mo Shalizi, for, quote, saving his life and signing him to a record deal. However, today, here in 2024, Murray lists the same guy as the one responsible for his downfall. Just like his music career, though, Murray's life has already seen plenty of ups and downs. Prior to superstar DJ Marshmello's manager calling Murray's wife's cell phone to offer him a contract, Murray was simply a young kid who was always finding himself in trouble. Born and raised in Fayetteville, North Carolina, also the same place that J. Cole grew up, with a father that was abusive then left, and a mother who was always working to survive, Murray's childhood was by no means easy. I was the only child, so my, my mom really had to work a lot, so she couldn't give me the things that you know, normal people would have. My homeboy JJ, I was losing weight. He used to give me his skinny jeans because that's all he had to give me. That's chubby with skinny as jeans. So. Murray and his mother bounced around living from basement to basement. But although he grew up singing in the church choir and was actually a smart student on A's and B's honor roll, as he says, being the chubby kid who wouldn't take any shit, Murray was constantly getting in fights outside of class. However, at the age of 12, his mother had enough and decided that they were going to pack up and move to Lebanon, Pennsylvania. By basically starting over fresh, his mom thought that moving to this small city of only about 25,000 people would help Murray stop his aggression. But instead, the complete opposite happened. Feeling like a total fish out of water in this new strange place, Murray resorted back to what he knew best, fighting. Murray got in so many fights in just his first month of sixth grade at this new school that he was kicked out of the district before even the second month. I'm from Fayetteville, North Carolina, so I'm a little country. These city is disrespectful. Now I gotta understand, okay, that's what you do? So now I gotta get my hands up because I'm fighting every single day. But in addition to fighting, it was also in Pennsylvania that Murray was first introduced to rap music. After making friends with the local hip-hop collective, it was then that Murray really discovered his true passion. I'd go and hang out with these dudes that just did music, Murray says. I'd just sit with them and listen to them rap, and the music would calm me down. Music has always been my outlet, but I didn't know how to use it until I got older. Once he got older, following a rough six years in Pennsylvania, Murray and his mother decided to return back to Fayetteville. Having now, quote, learned from himself and his previous mistakes, Murray was determined determined to turn his life around for the better. I got a girl pregnant and ended up having my first son. That's what made me realize that I'll never let him see me this way. I did whatever I had to do to stay afloat because I had to show my son how to be a man. W, W man, W father. He had to cut all that shit out that he was doing to make a better life for his child. That was fucking tough, bro. Write that down, write that down, chat, write that down. However, due to the fact that at this time in 2014, Murray was still yet to even record his first song, he was left to work numerous day jobs to support his family and new baby. From everything including construction, to call centers, to even a pork processing plant where he had to cut intestines out of pigs, it wasn't until his wife's birthday in 2014 when Murray was inspired to record his first song. I was 21 and was just getting ready to move out of my mom's house. I decided to write my wife a birthday song and post it on Facebook. That was July 26, 2014. I remember that day like the back of my hand that was the day i started taking music seriously i was like yo i'm i'm, I'm happy now with her uh -huh. i'm stable now I got, I got a car i got a house well i got somewhere to stay let me try to follow my dream now mm. 
heavily inspired by Drake and his ability to mix both singing and rapping, as Murray specifically lists Drake's 2009 mixtape So Far Gone as one of his all-time favorites. Combined with the years he spent as lead gospel singer of his church choir, this all helped influence Murray's unique vocal style and melodies. Despite music being a good escape for Murray, though, his early songs he posted on SoundCloud would only gain a few hundred streams, far from enough to make money off of. But little did Murray know that one day in the beginning of 2020, after having just lost his job at a call center, while also now having three kids to take care of at home, something his wife told him really opened his eyes and changed his approach to music. And she was telling me, what, what, this could be better, this could be better, this could, it was, it was, it could be so tight. So I said, let me write a song about me and try to see what happens. I went in the bathroom, smoked that last blunt on me, didn't even care, locked the door, and I wrote quicksand. Murray's wife understood him better than anyone, and knowing everything he'd been through in life, she encouraged him to make music that was more personal, stating that people want to hear something authentic. So that is exactly what he did. Rolling his last blunt, Murray then went into the bathroom and wrote the song that was about to change his life forever. But as we're about to see though, Quicksand would also be the song that led to his record contract with the same person he now claims is destroying everything he built. Oh. Damn. I crazy to hear. Don't bite in the hand of feed you. Motivated by his wife's feedback, Murray would then record the first version of what would soon become his platinum hit, Quicksand. Featuring a blend of soulful melodies mixed with heartfelt lyrics and an extremely catchy chorus, immediately after recording Quicksand in his kitchen, Murray and his wife knew this one was different. Quicksand is the first song when I, like, really combined them both. It was like, I can do both to see what happens. And I think that's what the problem was. It was either I wanted to be a rapper or I wanted to be a singer. And when I realized I could do both, so I wanted to do both. But while Murray knew that the track had potential, he also knew that he needed a music video to go with it. And with money already tight, he then enlisted the help of this guy, Jax of North, who had actually worked with Murray at the same call center. And Jax of North would then shoot the music video for free for his former co-worker. However, after first posting the quicksand video on his YouTube channel in March of 2020, it did not initially blow up much at all, only gaining about a thousand views in its first month. And while at the time Murray thought that was great, quicksand now sits at over 215 million views on YouTube, all thanks to a surprise phone call his wife received out of nowhere. One random day in April of 2020, while searching down a YouTube rabbit hole, Moshe Lisi stumbled upon the quicksand music video, and instantly captivated by Murray's vocals and personality, despite the video again only having a thousand views, Moshe Lisi saw the potential right away. Now, if you don't know who Moshe Lisi is, he's a very experienced and connected artist manager, as well as founder of his own record label, Pick Six Records, although he's most notable for managing and blowing up the career of superstar DJ Marshmello. It's essentially all these artists are brands now. Yeah. You know I mean? It's like, how do you build that, you know, brand awareness for the artists and, you know, bring value and stuff to the brand as a whole as a manager? As soon as Mo stumbled across Quicksand on YouTube, though, he immediately started trying to get in touch with Murray. However, there were just a few problems. At this point in 2020, not only had Murray lost his job at a call center, but then his own cell phone service had also been discontinued. Not to mention he had just spent his last paycheck on gas to drive in. Damn, that's just shit. Back to back to back. That's how you know you struggling. Mm -mm -mm. Damn. His father-in-law who is awaiting a kidney transplant. Understandably, as Murray states, I did not give a single fuck about music at that time. But yet Moshe Lisi was persistent and kept trying. I tried hitting him up on Instagram when he had like 500 followers and got nothing. No told advice about first discovering Murray. Found his personal Facebook, there was no answer. Eventually though, Mo was able to get in contact with the videographer who shot the quicksand music video, Jax of North, who would then send Moshe Lisi Murray's wife's cell phone number. I f a boy, like the fact that he picked me at a time where my phone was off, I had no job. Wow. We were in a different state. Like, he was really trying to figure out <laughs> the next move, and the move, like, plopped in my lap. At the time in 2020, Murray called it, quote, the best call he had ever received. However, as we'll see in a second, he now regrets picking up that phone. Prior to wow. Mo's phone call, Murray was seriously considering never recording another song. But after finally linking up, they agreed on Mo Shalizi becoming his first manager, as Murray would sign to Mo's record label, Pick Six Records. And the two got right to work. He said, but I really want to get behind you and push you as far as hard as I can. If you're willing to work your hardest, I'm willing to work behind you. 
However, the first thing Moshe Lisi did as Murray's new manager was actually delete the quicksand music video, along with the rest of Murray's previously released songs. Since he never really had the money to get his early tracks properly mixed and mastered, not to mention quicksand was again originally recorded in Murray's kitchen, Moshe Lisi knew that the song needed to be professionally reworked in order to meet industry standards and really blow up. So, after re-recording the vocals in his studio with Mo in LA, although he was concerned about losing the few thousand streams the music video had gained, Murray trusted Mo and his team as they made the decision to re-upload the video with this better quality audio in October of 2020, which I think it's safe to say that Murray's trust paid off. That pressure off me, you feel me? And then all of a sudden, I wasn't focused on finding a job, I was focused on the writing music. And all of a sudden, now I'm in LA, I'm about to record all these songs. Now all of a sudden, quick, I got 100,000. Like, what the f*** is happening? Do you love boating? No. I don't love, well, I do love boating, but I don't like these damn ads. This shit amazing, comments fellow Fayetteville rapper J. Cole <laughs> under Murray's post. My boy got a hit, says fellow Shalizi group superstar DJ Marshmello, along with more mainstream cosigns from DeBaby and Jay-Z, who included Quicksand in his official 2020 title playlist, plus of course some help from TikTok, the success of this single would help land Murray his first major record deal with Interscope Records, in a joint partnership with Mo Shalizi and Pick 6 Records. And at first, everything was going great. No cap, thank you to Interscope. Big six, my fans, family, everybody involved, because we did it. Maybe it's just so dope to be on a winning team with Pick 6 and then to add a powerhouse like Interscope to the mix is truly an amazing blessing. To keep his momentum rolling, Murray would then drop his debut project and first release under Interscope in April of 2021, a 14-track mixtape titled Street Sermons. But the year was just getting started for Murray. After landing a huge feature on J. Cole's sixth studio album, The Off Season, on the track My Life with 21 Savage, still oh, Murray's best performing song on the charts, <laughs> peaking at number two, Murray would then join Cole's 2021 Off Season tour as an opening act, giving him yet another massive cosign and opportunity. My first time linking with J. Cole, he flew me on the PJ to uh, LA. I don't want to tell the story a lot. My bad, big bro, he came out. He walked on the plane, I'm like, nah. Boy walked up with the messy dreads, bro. I'm talking about, I said, this is really cold. That same summer, Murray was also named to the 2021 XXL freshman list in one of the weaker classes, alongside artists like Pooh Shice, T42, Doug, and Coil Ray. From a troubled past to a promising future, Murray's story was the definition of the American dream. It all made perfect sense, recalls Murray of his come up. Pick six records in Mo Shalizi, that's my guru. I go to him whenever things don't make sense, and he always makes everything make sense. I honestly can't thank Mo enough for saving my life. That's my squad. Yeah. Loyalty is, is super big to me. However, while Murray and Moshe Lisi's first two years of working together were about as successful as they could have imagined, the next two years, though, played out like every artist's worst nightmare. F the label, F the CEO, they p the F them all, Murray tweeted. Yeah. Despite building all this momentum, as we now see, 2021 would go down as the peak of Murray's music career. And as of the time I'm recording this, the year of his last music project. The following year, 2022, saw Murray release a string of singles, including Still Here featuring Corday, although none of these tracks were anywhere close to the success of Quicksand. Then came 2023. After only officially releasing one song the whole year on streaming platforms with a track called High Life featuring Lil TJ in March, still released under Interscope and Pick 6 Records, it has now been over an entire year since Murray has dropped new music. In addition to the fact that again, his last project was over three years ago and he has still not dropped a debut album, many fans have been left to wonder what happened to Murray. Well, these past we few do. months, he's finally been revealing his side of what's going on behind the scenes. Mm. Being held back by labels and contracts, all I want to do is release my art, Murray mm. tweeted in March of 2024. I got so much music to drop. Ask the effing labels why I can't. Ask the effing label why it ain't coming out. Ask them why they bull****. Dang it. Damn, they been holding my butt back. I ain't gonna my nigga like that. He just trying to make some money on. Any other, any other label that I know, they want niggas to push out music, push, push, push out. Now they got one that don't. What does? Like, come on now, come on now. Back by the ones I started with is crazy. Just know I got some to get off my chest. Clearly, we can conclude from these recent tweets that Murray and his label have been beefing behind the scenes. More specifically, the one he started with Mo Shalizi and Pig Six Records. To confirm this is true, we can see that not only do Mo Shalizi and Murray no longer follow each other on Instagram, while Mo still follows literally every single other artist signed under Pig Six Records, but then we can also see that the official Pig Six account doesn't even follow Murray anymore either. Despite him still being listed in their bio, still listed on their website, and again their account follows literally every other artist signed to the label 
Abel but Murray. Unfortunately, we don't know yet exactly what went down behind the scenes, but it's no secret that Mo and Murray are no longer on good terms at all. Perhaps it was creative differences in the two wanting to take his career in different directions, or maybe it was something more personal. But as it appears, Murray's label has basically shelved him and isn't letting him release music when he wants to. However, we see this happen quite often, especially with upcoming rappers. Typically, when an artist's new releases are constantly flopping with fans, a label will essentially not let them drop music whenever they want. From a business and marketing standpoint, this makes sense as they don't want to waste money and invest on someone they know will flop. But from a new artist's point of view, this is easily one of the most damaging setbacks that can happen when you're trying to establish your career and be consistent. When everybody says, oh, my record label's controlling me and I can't get out of this deal, bro, the record label's sitting back like, wait a minute, you didn't do anything. You're flopped. The $10 million we gave you was for you to make a dope project that wasn't going to flop. You already broke your contract so now you think we're gonna let you go away and just get out of this deal while still owing us money no that's not how he says mm. Mm. that is true ass can't flop for this reason, what we often see happen is rappers fight it out until their contract is over and they get released. Which not only is it much harder as an independent artist with no help from a major label, but usually by this point they have waited so long and killed all the momentum they had previously built. Such as Lil Skies, in a very similar situation with his label who kept shelving him after he flopped and only sold 15k with his second album. After waiting it out, Skies is now independent, but many argue that it's too late. Your boy is independent, bruh. I'm fully independent, just me. As it appears, Murray is currently attempting this same thing. Still waiting to be released, should I drop a freestyle? Murray tweeted in December of 2023. But although we aren't given the specific terms and length of Murray's record contract to know exactly when he'll be released, I can guarantee you that tweeting stuff like F the label and F the CEO is not going to make them want to help you out. In fact, it does the total opposite. Combined with the label likely being afraid that his album would flop, it's also possible that they just thought it wasn't good enough to release. As like Murray says, after presenting what he thought was his finished debut album to one of his idols, J. Cole, which was originally set to release in early 2023 titled Long Story Short, but Cole told them that it still needed work i've presented hella albums i've been ready for an album don't get me wrong bro. i've been ready i presented to cole and told the nigga you're not ready and you know how hard it is to take that from somebody you look up to like i'm i think i'm done and you tell me i'm not like what the Again, as of this video, Murray's last project was over three years ago back in 2021. And the truth is, as he continues to wait, he is only sinking his career deeper and deeper. However, just like real quick, Sam, though, simply because you find yourself sinking does not mean that you can't escape. But you do have to know the proper technique. Now at age 31 and set to become an independent artist, there is no doubt that Murray has an extremely tough road ahead of him if he wants to regain the popular... Hey. That's the end of the video, but hey, they was spin some facts. Go fuck with 1111, you know, subscribe to him. I already liked his video. But yeah, he, he was giving us some good insight. Man, I fuck with him. Fuck with him. But anyways, that's the end of the video. It's your boy OGT Main signing out. Idiot.